ESPN on ABC. These fans in the Derby City for a party, always anticipating that starting gate opening. Their Louisville Cardinals are undefeated five games in. And now this crowd's been growing louder and louder for their toughest opponent yet. It is now post time on ABC Prime Time for the ready to run top 10 Fighting Irish. Our guys have worked really hard. They know uh, what's ahead of us without question. This is a, just a tremendous opportunity for our football team. You're going to get hit in the mouth. That dude is him. Who won? Who won? Who won? A coach born and raised here in a stadium ready to blow. Another one for a touchdown. That's what awaits the Irish. another night game and be a great atmosphere and a great opportunity. This is where you really show where you're at. Now, how you handle this one right now? And I'll need more than luck if these cards are right. Big time for us. Everyone yeah, watch yeah. it. The biggest game in years at U of L. Well, let's bring it to him, baby. Oh, yeah. The Irish way. Pick him up. On Saturday Night Football. Who won? Who won? Who won? Welcome to Saturday Night Football, presented by Capital One from LNN Stadium in Louisville. Saturday night, under the lights for the 10th ranked Notre Dame Fighting Irish. A week after their dramatic last second game winning drive, now the Irish face another ranked team in number 25. Louisville with Jesse Palmer on assignment for ABC. Jordan Rogers in the booth with us for this big one here at Louisville. Jordan, biggest crowd they've ever had here. Ahead of schedule when you think about them being 5-0. and They've got the first-year head coach they always wanted. They've got playmakers with speed, and they got that nice, glossy, undefeated record. That all sounds like it's going to absolutely be rocking in here tonight. I mean, you said it, it's the electricity of this offense, I think, that has brought so much excitement to this Louisville team, sitting at 5-0 and with everything in the ACC sitting in front of them against a Notre Dame team that everybody knows their margin for error to be a college football playoff team is getting pretty thin. So... They're going to get into it tonight. Yeah, so much has been asked of Notre Dame in recent weeks, but they got big time playmakers they can lean in on, including their new star tight end, Mitchell Evans, who's wired up tonight. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Oh. You look good, ain't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. pregame drive is next after this message and a word from our ABC stations. What a stretch of games for Notre Dame at number 25 Louisville tonight. The third of only four straight weeks against ranked opponents for the Irish. That hasn't happened since 2000. Joe Tessitore and Jordan Rogers in the booth with you tonight and two weeks ago the Irish played so well against Ohio State before the heartbreak last week some struggles against Duke before one of the great drives of the college football season to take it back to last week and it was just magical with Sam Hartman being masterful trailing on the road came up with critical passes Jordan clutch moments overcoming every third down obstacle and then on fourth down all time magic running for 17 yards when they needed 16 on this play right here and it would lead to Audric Estime taking it home on the next play for the go ahead. The 95 yard scoring drive, the longest game winning drive for the Irish 
in 53 years. And Jordan, we made a trip to South Bend this week. And we sat there with Sam Hartman, and so much was learned from that moment at Duke. Yeah, and you talk about leadership as a transfer quarterback and really one of the most coveted guys in the entire country when it comes to the transfer portal. It's easy when you have his talent and experience for guys to want to play with you. But he kept harping on the fact that a leader in a championship football team has to have a quarterback that people want to play for, not just with. And I think you saw a little bit of that last week on that fourth and 16, putting his body on the line, oh, yeah. sacrificing, being the biggest in the big moments. This team, they already wanted to, but they absolutely are ready to play for him tonight and for the rest of this season. On the other side, we're in the midst of this Louisville resurgence with the Cardinals' legendary former quarterback now as their head coach, and Katie, a well-traveled starting quarterback who he reconnects with. Well, Tess, even though Jack Plummer has led Louisville to a 5-0 start, Jeff Rom says he needs more consistency from his veteran quarterback. He says Plummer is streaky at times, accurate, efficient, and then he goes cold. So they really want to get him in a groove early tonight. And then when he's under pressure, Rom wants to see more poise and composure. He says the key for Plummer is to and play within the system and not try to do too much. Plummer told me this week the turnovers, they eat at him. He said he's a smarter player than what he showed last week against NC State. Together, they feel like Plummer can bounce back against the Irish test. Look at this scene here, folks. Coach Jeff Brom has a history of major top 10 upset wins when he was at Purdue. Now going after one of the biggest brands of all time and giving us locker room access tonight. This is a great test to see what you're made of. All right. Believe in the guy next to you. Believe in yourself and go out there and compete on every single play. Don't be letting up. Don't be giving in. I don't care if we're up by 10. I don't care if we're down by 15. If you're not committed to playing for 60 minutes, everything you got, just stay on in here. Okay, because we got enough guys in this room that I know want to go out there and compete to win the game. So let's go now. One play at a time. Get a look in your eyes. Stay locked in and focused. Let's go win the game. Let's go. Focus. That's what they are right now as the red lights are in the tunnel. The fans are ready. There was always an undercurrent in this town about Jeff Brom's return. Many hoping, thinking, if not plotting, when they would get the guy who wore number 11, that jersey. Well, it is now, and it is games like this that they've wanted for opponents like that. Louisville is 5 0 for the first time. In 10 seasons, here they come. And the Irish take the field with their Saturday night fever this year in the midst of four straight Saturday night games. Trying to stay alive for the college football playoff is Marcus Freeman's team. This has been the Nissan pregame drive. Just the fourth time the Irish have played Louisville. Katie is with Coach Freeman. Thanks, Tess. Coach Freeman, three primetime games, three ranked opponents. How has your team handled the continuous pressure during this stretch? You know, as my communication has been to them, is we got to focus on this one. And you know what? That's one of the great opportunities we get to be on prime time, to be on ABC, um, and play an undefeated opponent. But it's this opponent, this game, this moment. It was loud at Duke. It's obviously a little bit louder here. How do you manage the crowd noise early? Well, we've, we've worked it in practice, right? We can't just say we got to be better. We have to truly work it, and we've worked it in practice, and uh, we'll go on a little bit different cadence, but um, we got to continue to make sure that we focus on the things that we do and not so much worry about what they do. Best of luck tonight. Thanks, Katie. Andy mentions the crowd noise. This is the largest crowd in Louisville football history. They've added seats in recent years. They got top 10 Notre Dame here. They're 5-0. and oh. They have come out for it. Louisville won the toss. They elected to defer. So Price and Ford back deep for the Irish as Travelstead will be kicking off our night prime time on ABC. Another test for the Irish. This is Price on the return as he makes his way near the 20. 
Sam Hartman, of course, the Irish quarterback, but he had all the success at Wake. That means, Jordan, he was up against Louisville the past couple of years. In 2021, went for 324 yards, a couple touchdowns, defeated them. Last year, three interceptions, lost to Louisville 48-21. Yeah, the good thing, the best part about Sam Harvey, he's going to have a short memory. And he is coming off probably his worst statistical performance last week, but the confidence in that last drive you'd hope is going to carry over, let Notre Dame get a fast start tonight. 145 pass attempts without an interception for Sam Hartman. Plenty of time for his first pass of the evening as he gets it out to the 26-yard line to Rico Flores, the true freshman, who had a key catch on that final drive last week against Duke. That yeah, really thrust into a bigger role with Jaden Thomas and Jaden Greathouse out last week. You see Jaden Thomas down there, that's going to be a big boost to this Notre Dame passing attack. Big number 83, Thomas, is to the top of your screen here. Second and seven. Quick pass to the outside, and it goes back to Flores, and that's an Irish first down. It's a great job there on a the little RPO. That's what you want to do when you're in an environment that's going to be as loud as this is. And when you struggled like they did last week on some of the false starts and the noise, you want to quiet that crowd down early, get a first down, get things rolling. And yard completion to Flores. Tight ends shift out. Hartman to pass again. Over the middle and gets it complete to Evans. And Evans has really developed Jordan into a big weapon for the Irish. Oh, yeah, this is tight end you, right? I mean, stepping right into this role. Love how he works in space. He's going to be on a basic dig here, about 15 yards, right over the middle of the field. Hartman does a good job with a little noise in his face of getting that one off, putting it right on 88. Hartman three for three to open up this game. To the outside, that ball is intercepted! That was Quincy Riley! And the longest streak in Notre Dame history to start the year without an interception just came to an end. First pick of the year of Sam Hartman, Quincy Riley gets the turnover. And a monster play by Louisville to start this game. They love playing press coverage on the outside. And Quincy Riley is really good in this. Working on true freshman Rico Flores. That ball just a little too far upfield. Puts a lot of air on it, anticipating Flores being able to make a play on it. As you see the hand fighting and just better position there by Quincy Riley. Stayed over the top, turned inside to the receiver, got his eyes on the ball, and a monster pick to start. Linebacker Jalen Alderman with a nice job getting pressure there. Jack Plummer now takes over after the turnover. Quick to the outside as Plummer gets it to Jordan. Jordan, a transfer from Syracuse, who has the most rushing yards in the ACC so far this season. And yeah, this offense really goes as Jawar Jordan goes. Didn't have a great night last week, 16 for 32 on the ground, but he's capable of spitting one at any moment. Six yards there. Now on the ground as he lowers the shoulders and goes straight ahead through J.D. Bertrand. And that'll move the chains for Louisville. Well, Jeff Brom really harped on a fast start for Jack Plummer in this offense. I wouldn't be surprised if a shot play comes here in the next couple plays. Test Notre Dame deep, see if he can't get one. That was the first run of the game for either team. And five straight passes to open things up. One of them picked off. Jordan again, as he's able to ride it ahead for just a couple yards into the meat of that defensive line with Riley Mills making the tackle. Jack Plummer is in his sixth season of college football. Last year he played at Cal, previously was at Purdue for three years, and of course he was there with his current head coach, Jeff Brown. He's a guy that knows this system really well, which is why he's out. You see him going spread, five wide here. Went tempo, and now they'll utilize that play clock. Looking over at Brian Brom, former star quarterback. 
Second and six. Plummer over the middle. Gets it complete, and this is Thrash, their best playmaker, as he shows you the speed, the wiggle, and out past midfield, just like that for a card's first down. Yeah, second in the ACC in yards. He's the guy, they want to get it to him in space as many ways as possible. A little missed tackle there flying in, but that's what he does so well. You get him the ball in space, and something good happens. I'm going to see how many times they can feed number one tonight. Ten yards for Thrash. Turned in motion, Garendo remains the back, and he will get the carry, but he is driven back by J.D. Bertrand, who's been a tackling machine lately. He had eight against Ohio State, 11 against Duke. That yeah, really good job by Bertrand. Also really good job by Howard Cross. 56 right there, holding his ground in that gap. Forced the run to bounce a little bit and land right in J.D. Bertrand's lap. Just a yard for Garendo. Plummer on second and nine. Has to extend the play. And then able to get it complete. Looks to be about a yard shy of that line to gain as he connects with Jaden Thompson. Thompson. 52-year-old Jeff Brom. Play Scott Satterfield, left for Cincy. From, of course, a Louisville legend, that family name. Jawar Jordan back into the game as Dwayne Martin, who plays that sniffer H roll, comes in on third and two. First third down of the drive. Jordan patiently waits, utilizes the cut, and has another first down for Louisville. Well, Dwayne Martin played a little fullback position. Does a great job of climbing and getting this pickup block right here. Watch this block. Going to give Jordan just enough real estate there to turn the corner and then get north and south. Drive for Louisville as they run option. Pitch to Jordan. Jordan to the outside. has got a lane and goes for 12 yards. And Louisville is on the go after the interception of Hartman. I tell you what, I love this plan so far. It's a tempo. Get to the line of scrimmage. Then look to the sideline. Dame to show your hand and look to the side. Let Jeff Brom dial up the perfect play. I mean, Jack Plummer's not an option quarterback. But you dial up the perfect play against an end that's in sole responsibility on the edge there. Ends up being a big game. And you hand out a lot of pennies to the backup quarterbacks yeah. as well, huh? You got about four guys out there with different colored pennies. On the 20 yard line, fresh set of downs. Jordan again, and you see what he is capable of as he's written down by Jack Kaiser. But Gerard Jordan, who Jeff Brom is so high and loves his explosiveness, listen, a little undersized, but he's got great vision, Jordan. Yeah, and he's a home run hitter. It's a home run waiting to happen. That's what Jeff Brom said. Man, we just, last week we felt like it was going to break at some point. It really just didn't, but you can tell already. Louisville offensive line doing a good job at the point of attack, creating push. He's getting some seams. One of these times he's going to take it. See Sam Hartman's face after throwing his first interception of the season. And now Louisville already in the red zone. They run option to the other side. Garendo. He's inside the 10, and it is first and goal, Louisville. Boy, same play we saw just two plays ago. It's a speed option. Look to the sideline. You got a wide nine technique. Leah foul there sitting out there, and, and he's got to take responsibility for the quarterback and the running back. It's just a great job by Jeff Brom of going, hey, let's keep it simple. Give this guy a bind and take it right at him. Evan Conley has come into the game. They have a package for the backup quarterback. A senior who likes to run the ball. First and goal, and that's what he's going to do with big guys in front as he gets it inside the five-yard line. 
He has 40 career completions, four touchdown passes, but a package that we've seen often in practice and in games this year for Evan Conley as Jack Plummer will be sent back into the game by Coach Brom. Yeah, and that's something we're not going to see stop anytime soon as soon as they get down in the red zone. That's a quarterback they want to figure out how to get him involved. Down around the red zone. This is where they can get creative if they need to. Jeff Brom alluded to the fact they got a ton of trick plays they're bringing into the package tonight. Second goal. Plummer was looking left and then just has to throw it away. And a flag comes down. Gary Patterson heads up this crew tonight. An eligible receiver downfield, number 87. Offense, it was covered up. Five yard penalty. Repeat second down. Boy, just a little formation issue. 87 here gets covered up by the wide receiver just out of the screen, you see. So he can't go downfield. He's blocking, but just gets past that little cushion that they give you. Anytime you're blocking and you're standing in the end zone, you're probably going to get a flag there. Second and goal from the nine. Plummer has to step up in the pocket. To the end zone, he goes. Touchdown! Jamari Thrash. <laughs> Jeff Brom said to us yesterday, our best playmaker, we got to get him touches early. They did. And watch Burnham off the edge. Applies that initial pressure. Great job. Taking hand and ball forward, stepping up with speed. Jack Plummer and then finding the open guy. Sam Hartman, Notre Dame star quarterback. Hadn't thrown an interception all year long. That changed quickly. Quincy Riley was on it. And when Riley hauled it in, this place erupted. Jack Plummer got to work and Thrash delivered. Cards up, 7-zip. Joe Jordan, Katie, back with you after that 12-play, 70-yard drive by Louisville that took over seven minutes and six seconds. This is Devin Ford and good special teams coverage by the Cards. Funny how that happens with momentum. Well, as you know, all season long, student sections across the country are competing to be the Taco Bell Live Ma Student Section of the Year. You can download the Taco Bell app to learn more. You think this student section's having themselves a day and night? They're living Ma so far. Oh, boy, oh, boy. And here comes the noise. All right, this is the start that Louisville wanted that Notre Dame didn't. From their own 15. This is Love, the freshman. Jeremiah Love, and look at him go. He has got extreme talent. Had a fake punt against Duke, and now rips off this run for 13 yards. What a great job by Coral, the center there, pulling all the way around, getting that lead block for Jeremiah Love. They'll mix him in. He is a dynamic back. Taller guy, a little more lanky, but he can absolutely change the game at a moment's notice. All that depth and skill positions that Notre Dame's been acquiring and recruiting in recent years, showing off with a guy like Jeremiah Love. And now they will work him as he takes it out to about the 33-yard line, tackled by T.J. Quinn. He is the top tackler on the cards. Yeah, and I think this is where Notre Dame feels they can probably lean on Louisville a little bit. A little lighter up front than what they faced last week against Duke. Very talented was Duke up front on the defensive line. I expect Notre Dame to lean on that run here. How about SMA just sitting back and watching Love? Got a star like that, and you got young talent like Jeremiah Love. That was intended for Rico Flores, incomplete. 
And now this is what you worry about playing on the road. Third down, loud crowd under the lights. And you see Notre Dame's third down conversion pace. Third and five for Hartman. Pressure off the edge as he is ripped down all the way back at the 20-yard line. That was Ramon Perrier coming down on Sam Hartman. Oh, he's just a free rusher off the edge right here. Hot route's going to be out to the left. It's actually Chris Tyree, but he slips and falls. That's where Hartman wants to work. That's why he's got to step up there, trying to get rid of the ball to a quick out in the slot. But Tyree falls, and when your hot route falls on a blitz with a free rusher, it's about all you can do. It was Alderman again coming in. And now McPherson punting away. Coleman, the return man from the 20. Oh, ball is loose! But he falls right on it. It was headed in the same direction. Louisville defense stepping up early on here at home. Quick break and right back. ABC Saturday Night Football is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And in part by Target. Target Circle Week is here now through October 7th. It's good to be a Brahm in these parts. From Oscar, Jeff, Greg, Brian, and Kim, the three-sport athlete at Spalding. And there's Brian, former great quarterback, who had his jersey honored tonight, the offensive coordinator. Yeah, look, if your last name is Brahm, you don't get to go anywhere else. You're not allowed to. You're Louisville through and through. Jack Plummer's the current quarterback who Brian coaches up. Jeff, of course, the head coach. And on the first drive, Jordan, he was four for four for 32 yards, had that touchdown to thrash. And more importantly, took a ton of time off the clock. Four minutes left in the first right now. 7.06 was that long drive after the interception. Gets the ball out quickly. As he goes to Callaway, who made the first man miss. But that's really what you plan to see a lot tonight, the quick game. Katie, it's good to be a Brahm in these parts. Don't you know, there's been a renewed sense of and pride in Louisville football test since the Brahms returned home. Brahm ball is something fans can really be proud of, and that's evident with tonight's crowd. But in talking to fans around town, they'll tell you they've been really impressed by the professionalism shown from coaches and players on the sidelines. There's a sense of urgency, and there's clearly no quit in this team. Second and six, Jordan off left tackle. Here he goes, past midfield, Jawar Jordan. Boy, losing contain on the left side. I'm gonna see Jawar Jordan, like we were talking about. He bounces, he sees some green grass, he's gonna absolutely go. And really, it's this block right here. To hold, contain, and allow Jordan to get to the outside. Well, last week at NC State, he only had 32 yards on 16 carries. Meanwhile, everybody else has had a difficult time with him. A 700 yard rushing game in his last 10 games. First down, play action. Plummer. Pocket collapsing, and he goes down. As Notre Dame's front was able to take him down, and that was Osapo Menza. Yeah, protection not bad there actually. Nice little pocket for Jack Plummer to step up into. It's just protection. Look across the board. I mean, Notre Dame in perfect position. There's nowhere to go with the football right there. That's a coverage sack. Second and 18. Big play from the Irish defense. Jordan trying to get something back as he crosses midfield. And it'll be third and long. Third and long, but that clock ticking. Remember what Jeff Brom said to us just yesterday? He said, look, we want to keep this close, get it tight in the second half, give us a chance to gain some confidence as this game goes along. I mean, driving here in the third and long, up seven, as the first quarter here ticks away with number 10, Notre Dame, in your house. Yeah, Notre Dame's had eight plays of offense, Jordan. Eight plays of offense, and look at this clock tick away in the first quarter.
Plummer. Downfield. And that is incomplete. Could have been intercepted by Clarence Lewis. But it goes incomplete. So the sack of Plummer backs them up. Gets them into a long down and distance. And now they'll be punting away. Well, it's an aggressive throw here by Plummer. But again, not anywhere to go with the football. And a great job in Tampa 2 coverage there. Clarence Lewis just carrying that bender, that middle seam. Brock Travel Plummer trying to fit into a window that just wasn't there. Brock Travel said who does all three special teams duties of kickoff, place kicker, and punter looking to pin the Irish as Tyree will put the heels on the 10 yard line. It bounces inside the 10 and into the end zone. So it does go for the touchback. Sam Hartman and that Irish offense back out there when we return to the Ville. Well, it's been all Louisville defense to start tonight. Pressure on Sam Hartman, errant throw. Louisville needed to start fast, and the defense has answered early here against Notre Dame. First quarter already almost done. Louisville Seven, hasn't given up nothing. a point in the first quarter this season, Jordan. Quincy Riley had the interception of Sam Hartman, and now Sam Hartman a six year senior after the great career at Wake and all the drama he's put forth this year at Notre Dame, especially last week. Sensational final drive gets it to Love and Jeremiah Love. What a bright future he has. Let's go to the studio to Kevin. Test now for our Dr. Pepper Fansville studio update. Second play of the game, Dan Michigan's offense. Well, it's their defense. Johnson, the corner, is just playing vision on that out route to Minnesota's quarterback. He never stares off of it. It's an easy walk-in pick six for the Michigan Wolverine defense. Will Johnson, 35 yards of the house, 10-3 Michigan. Back to you guys. And pick six for Michigan. Nine yards from Love on that last play. Estime goes ahead to move the chains. Last week, of course, the game-winning touchdown run when he sprinted through the Duke defense for that 30-yarder. Yeah, if the run game gets going, this is where, now with Jaden Thomas back in the game and healthy, you'd expect them to try to test again downfield a little bit. I know the interception came early, but this is a team that needs to be able to stretch Louisville vertically. Hartman on first down with time and nearly intercepted again. Riley was on that ball. He got his 12th career interception earlier tonight and he was playing the ball well there as Hartman floated it downfield looking for Tyree. Yeah, again trying to push vertical get Quincy to turn his hips and run but he played that one great almost had his second interception there. This is a Louisville defense that is physical. They like to play press coverage. And I'll tell you what, they are not intimidated by Notre Dame so far tonight. Ron English is their defensive coordinator. He told us yesterday he's been very impressed with the effort. Second and ten. Hartman's going to run it himself. And he is taken down. Didn't slide there as T.J. Quinn with yet another tackle. Louisville with a fast start. Their defense delivered. Plummer was able to find Thrash. And this upset-minded team doesn't give up a point in the first quarter again. Saturday Night Football, presented by Capital One, returns after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Joe Tessitore, Jordan Rogers, Katie George here at Louisville. 7-0 for number 25 against the top 10 Irish. Start of the second quarter. Sam Hartman pressure up the middle. They get to him. Sam Hartman taken down. Boy, and nothing fancy here. Billy Shrouth, number 74, right there on your screen, getting worked on by Gelati, their best pass rusher for Louisville, just pushes him back right to the lap. They were trying to get a double move down the sideline, and Gilbert Frierson paying it off. Second sack tonight for the Bill. McPherson punting away. Fair catch at the 31. Jordan, what a good one next Saturday right here on ABC. 
It is a rivalry game, but it is of great significance for the college football playoff. Pac-12 matchup, number eight, Oregon, number seven, Washington, in Seattle, 3.30 Eastern on ABC, and NFL scouts are going to like the quarterback action there. And if you like offense, I'd tune into that one. Michael Penix Jr., Bo Nix, Roma Dunze. I mean, that, that Washington offense, that Oregon offense, take the over if you got a chance. Lorendo in the backfield flanking Plummer here as this Louisville defense exceeding expectations against big, powerful Notre Dame in their run game. Lorendo as he muscles his way ahead, tackled by Jean-Baptiste. We see Louisville now huddling, right? They early on, first quarter, they're going tempo, get to the line of scrimmage, force Notre Dame to line up, look to the sideline. Definitely milking and controlling that clock right now here in the second quarter for the touchdown lead. Coleman motions out on second and six. Plummer, incomplete. He's been pretty reliable in the slant and quick game, but Chris Bell could not call it in there. Actually, good location there, those slant routes. Anytime it's tight coverage, you want to keep that a little bit lower, right, so you avoid those tips and overthrows. Chris Bell just couldn't come down to that one, down with that one in here. Third and long, third and medium-ish. Let's see if Notre Dame decides to dial up some pressure. Keep hitting these shots of Sam Hartman just patiently waiting there. Frustratingly waiting. Exactly, only four completions so far. Third down and six. They do not come with pressure against Plummer, but Plummer cannot escape Leofau. Maris Leofau able to get to Jack Plummer. Boy, Plummer thinks he's got a nice little pocket to step into. Jalen Sneed here is going to loop. Little, little stunt on the left side here. So as Plummer steps up, runs right into Sneed. And then Leofau able to finish that one off. Again, I thought they maybe were going to come with pressure. They didn't. Just good games on the outside to kind of fool Plummer into stepping up into what he thought was a pocket. Travelstead punts away. Tyree lets it bounce, and it takes a big, and I mean big, Louisville roll all the way down to the 12-yard line. And that is where Sam Hartman will return to action when we return to Louisville. the ACC on ESPN. So far tonight, Sam Hartman has taken a beating. His right ear is swollen and bloody. He's been sacked twice and hit a couple times. This is a guy that's used to overcoming adversity. And so far, guys on the sidelines, Notre Dame looks a little shocked that they've been hit in the mouth early by Louisville. All right, so we got a bloodied ear. Not exactly Vincent Van Gogh level, but he has been artistic with some of his plays this year. But this offense is not fine art right now, Katie, as they look to gather themselves. Hartman the slant as he gets a complete to Jaden Thomas Sam Hartman who you know he comes into this offense after spending those years in that Wake Forest slow mesh and the move is really hey let's look good for NFL scouts in the meantime he's got a chance to have a very special season for Notre Dame I think he's looked really comfortable in this pro style system and that's coming from a guy that he's got to take snaps from under center now he'd never done that not even in high school back to Pee Wee football so a lot of this is new but he looks comfy Second and five, Estime nearly tracked down from behind, but instead the big guy able to barrel ahead close to that line again, depending on that mark met by Alderman. Estime runs so hard. And that offensive line does such a good job of getting out, getting on the move. And it is a first down for the Irish. I'll tell you what, as, as this Notre Dame offense looks to kind of find its footing, if I'm Jared Parker, their offensive coordinator, I find my block of plays that has a number 88 next to it. Find Mitchell Evans. Good things happen when you find your tight end. He had 134 receiving yards a week ago. Again, getting the ball out quickly as he's able to go to the other tight end, Holden Stays. Hey, that works too, right? Love that. ISO both your tight ends on one side. There's Parker, Parker again, tries to get his quarterback in this offense. A little bit back on track. I mean, hasn't been 
been super explosive the last couple weeks. Obviously, Ohio State and Duke, two quality opponents, really good defenses. They could use a jump start. Second and three, Estime. And another three, first down for the Irish. Tackle made by TJ Quinn. That's Rico Flores, true freshman wide receiver down there on the ground getting looked at. He has been very strong lately, the true freshman receiver. So as the medical team tends to him, we will take a short break. ABC Saturday Night Football presented by Capital One is brought to you by Experian. Get smart about money. Well, this win, the blackout win in 06 against then number three West Virginia has been referenced a lot this week here in Louisville, Jordan. Brian Brom, current offensive coordinator, threw for 354 yards that night. But people in town have said, hey, listen, top 10 Notre Dame, biggest crowd ever. It's, it could be on the short list, the most special nights. Right now they've got a touchdown lead with an Irish offense opposite Louisville that's just trying to steady itself and possibly finds its way here on this drive as it is first down for Sam Hartman under center with Estime carrying the ball and he is taken down right away by Jarvis Brownless. Well, still searching for that explosive play if you're the Notre Dame offense and one thing to note this this Louisville defense they're playing low safeties are adding to the box and they're not respecting the downfield pass that's why those runs are kind of clogging up and that's been a problem for Notre Dame. Started the offense, started the year off good on those deep shots, 20 plus air yards downfield. Last two games, nothing. And so far tonight, I think maybe 0 for 1. That interception might have been 0 for 2. Let's see if Sam Hartman can change that. Empty set. Hartman. There's a strike for a first down to Chris Tyree, the former running back. Another guy, you think about increasing your NFL stock. He's instantly been productive now as a receiver. When he got man coverage, this safety's going to drop. Just hold him right there. You see the eyes of Sam Hartman right downfield. Hold that safety. Rip that one-on-one. -on -one. Slant there to Chris Tyree. Price on the carry as he doesn't find much just a couple yards as Cam Wilson was able to make the tackle for Louisville. I mean just look at all these Louisville defenders in the box one two three four five six seven eight nine nine guys within eight yards of the line of scrimmage. I mean there's there's not going to be a gap to run the football as good as this rushing attack for Notre Dame has been. Second and eight. Pressure off the edge, they pick it up. Here's your downfield shot. As it goes incomplete, Jaden Thomas was locked up with Jarvis Brownless. Sam Hartman, Hartman find 88, find Mitchell Evans. That is the tight end flexed out. Third down and eight, Hartman able to get it complete for a first down. Sam Hartman throws complete. Boy, and they bracket Mitchell Evans, guy on the inside, guy on the outside. Jordan facing here. With the reception, you see that defender kind of stay on the outside of Mitchell Evans, opens up that void in the zone. Great job of Sam Harden by moving on from 88, finding the open guy and moving the sticks on a third long. Yeah. 
After the 12-yard completion, Irish with a great opportunity here. Estime. As it took three Louisville defenders to take down Big Audric Estime. Cam Wilson was the first to get there. Jared Parker, the offensive coordinator, replaced Tommy Reese, who of course left for Bama. Parker came up under Coach Cutcliffe at Duke, was a big mentor in his career. Second and seven, eight gap pressure. Estime picks it up, lofting it inside the 10, and Faison's got it. Came up with the big catch moments ago, and now the touchdown reception. 36 yards from Hartman. Boy, there we go, we've been waiting for it. I want you to watch the eyes of Hartman looking that way gets this safety to fly and then that route coming right over the top boy such a good job we've been waiting for the shot play Tess Jordan Faison with the touchdown reception and Notre Dame finally breaks through it was a well managed 11 play drive and then Sam Hartman putting it right in the basket. We are all tied up here at Louisville. Joe Jordan, Katie, back with you. 7-7 game here at the Bill. We talked about that last drive being well managed, Jordan. It started at the Notre Dame 12. Six passes, five runs, and then Hartman the downfield strike. And it really started with the commitment to the run game for Notre Dame. Started sucking all those guys down into the box, get man coverage. Notre Dame finally took advantage of it. A reminder tomorrow on Sunday NFL Countdown how Christian McCaffrey has been inspired by the philosophies of Bruce Lee. Does that sell for you? You down with that? Be like water? Yeah. yeah. yeah formless shape of water. I buy it. That's 10 a.m. Eastern. And then Monday Night Football. Packers, Raiders in Vegas. That's 8 Eastern on ABC. And ESPN, of course, Peyton and Eli on E2. Jimmy G back? That'd be a good one. Seven minutes to half. We'll hear from Kevin, Dan, and Booger. Big day of football. That is incomplete as Huggins Bruce could not get it. Well, we talked all in the lead up to this game, all in the first quarter about momentum, about controlling the football for Louisville. This is a huge drive right here. Six minutes left, just under seven minutes left here. Momentum kind of tipping back towards Notre Dame after Louisville controlled it most of that first half. And Plummer started five of five passing. He's 0 for his last three. Can he solve that? Nearly intercepted by Morrison, who's an excellent sophomore corner. And as Coach Freeman said to us the other day when we were in South Bend, he goes, you look at his freshman year, it was great, but he's built off of that tremendously well. No doubt. And this is what you call being in phase as a corner right on the hip. Sees the ball the whole way and nearly came down with the one similar to Quincy Riley earlier in the game for Louisville. Jimmy Callaway working along the sideline just did a great job of giving him no room right along the white there of the sideline. So a third and ten. Plummer. Plummer is taken down by Bertrand. Second sack for the Irish. Boy, again, it's going to be games from Notre Dame. Just a four man rush dropped into coverage, but it's going to be the looper right here. A TE stunt there on the outside. That E, JD Bertrand. It's a great job of staying with it and bringing down Jack Plummer. Chris Tyree back deep to receive for the Irish. And again, there's that momentum, right, Tess? You feel it? 
Well, look no further than that being the second three and out for Louisville. It's a wobbler that takes a Louisville bounce inside the 40. Well, guys, as you could imagine, Jeff Brom is not happy with Jack Plummer. He's still in his ear. He yelled at him on his last throw and said, that's not open. You need to make better decisions. So this is a guy that he says he doesn't coach too hard because he's such a veteran. He used to coach him really hard at Purdue, but he's on him right now for his past mistakes. Jordan, what do you make of that comment? If Brom turned to us yesterday and said, at Purdue, I coached him hard. Here, he said, I can't. He said, I can't coach him hard. Well, I think you, you start to realize how best each personality listens, responds, and learns. I think Jack Plummer's one of those guys that needs to talk it through. So that's the approach they take. See if Hartman can keep that momentum swing. Chris Tyree, as it was well blocked in front, helmet Hartman comes off at the end of that Tyree. play for the former running back now playing in that slot. Boy, love watching Chris Tyree. You mentioned a former running back, loved watching Tavon Austin, Reggie Bush, those kind of guys growing up. So when they approached him about making that switch, he realized the impact he could make on some of those tunnel screens, getting him the ball in space. You see one right there. Now this summer, he made 20,000 catches on the Ooh. passing machine they had just to get ready for this transition. Second and two after the eight-yard reception. Estime. He was undercut, but with all that momentum, he surges ahead for what should be a first down. It was Quinn who went low on him. How do your hands feel after 20,000 catches on the job? Put the work in. <laughs> but he, was a, he was a good running back, too, now. Yeah, he was. Keep in mind, it's a guy who, back in 2020 against Syracuse, had a 94-yard touchdown run. Third down and one. The running back of choice is the nearly 230-pounder, though. Estime. Came in leading the nation in rushing yards, and they will lean on him off in spots like this. Bring everybody in. Tight formation on third and one. A lot of finger pointing with the pre snap motion. Prior to the snap, ball start. Boy, this was an issue last week, the false starts, but this one more had to do with the play getting in, in time. They were going to start out in the wide set, then condense after motion. Hartman was trying to get them to just line up right away. We're running down against the uh, the play clock there, and I think everyone got a little antsy up front. Now a third and a foot turns into third and six. Attack Blake Fisher, excellent right tackle there. So now that changes things. Estime out. Jadarian Price in at running back with third and six. They go jet motion this time and unable to find much with Love. Jeremiah Love tried to turn the corner, but good pursuit down the line for the cards. A oh, great pursuit. Benjamin Perry comes all the way across from left to right, following Jeremiah Love the entire time. Watch this pursuit here coming from this side, following Love. He's going to end up getting all the way across and making that tackle. It's man coverage. you got to follow your guy, but he's got to sort through some bodies on the way over. McPherson on to punt. The first three and out for Notre Dame. Black comes in as Coleman was able to field it just before it went out. That's a first down. It was fourth and three. Louisville offside, first down the other way. How can you? Wow. How can you, Jordan? You can't. You Just turn your head in a line. Look to the right and look at the referee. That is incredible. That's one of those that in film, you just want to walk out of the room the next day. Oh. So that is a first down for the Irish. Force the first three and out. And now you give it right back to Notre Dame. Give them a momentum back. Would have been Louisville ball under four minutes to play. Instead, Sam Hartman back on the field with time and gets it complete to stays. Boy, 
another great job by Sam Hartman. Holding in the pocket here. Wants to take a shot to the left to Chris Tyree, actually, on a vertical route. Not there, so a little pressure in his face. Double pumps it. Still able to get it to hold and stays there for a nice little pickup in traffic. Benjamin Perry there who just made the tackle a play ago. Almost in on that one as well. Second and one. Play caller's dream. See what Jared Parker comes up with. Play action. Hartman. Goes to the second level and it's incomplete. Rico Flores, the true freshman, was the intended target. Well, that's one of those that you're hanging on as a quarterback, hanging on. Just dump that down to the guy in the flat. Waiting for Rico Flores to come out of the break. All right, last third and short. Remember, they tried a little jet sweep to Jeremiah Love instead of just getting downhill and handing it off to your big back. Let's see as they bring three tight ends in once again. But the back is Payne. Estime is not in here. Jabron Payne. Third and one. Oh, the ball's out. Ball is out, and Louisville's got it. They faked the pitch, tried to go inside counter, got a little too cute, and the Cardinals get it. And it is Brownless with the recovery. And that is just a third fumble that Notre Dame has lost this season. They wanted to get it to Chris Tyree, and instead, it's a turnover Louisville ball. Well, we talked about the change of offense for Sam Hartman under center here. Ball handling's completely different, trying to get a little cute with the, again, another reverse, just hand it off downhill, right? Ashton Gelati, the end there for Louisville, great job of applying the pressure, but again, you're asking a quarterback, a uh, really difficult ball handling there on a little kind of reverse change of direction on a third and a foot. Jack Plummer's been struggling recently. And now they keep it on the ground with Turner. And Turner cannot find much as Benjamin Morrison makes the tackle for the Irish. Two turnovers tonight. They came in with only two turnovers on the season. Boy, that's what you can't do on the road, right? With a team in Louisville that's still figuring out who they are, even at 5-0. and oh. Giving them opportunities to build confidence here as the half ticks away. Two and a half minutes to go. The new entry into the rankings. Louisville, the surprise team at 5-0. Toe to toe with the top 10 Irish. Turner trying to catch a lane, and it'll be third down and two. Man, I think Notre Dame's going to have a conversation about third and short in the locker room at halftime, huh? No doubt about it, of how to manage it, of how to keep it simple. As Coach Brom sends in Evan Conley. Remember, they have the special package for the backup quarterback run heavy package but we'll see what it offers up on third and two he's going to test that right side can he get there no that was well defensed it was xavier watts making the tackle on Conley. Excellent job by Al Golden's defense. Boy, watch Xavier Watts just read this the entire way. Connolly comes in the game, you're expecting quarterback run, and he just beats the quarterback to the spot right here. Reading eyes the whole way. Notre Dame is going to use a timeout with 90 seconds before halftime. Boy, how many chains of possessions have we had here in the last, like, two, two minutes? What is, what is going on? Well, it's interesting to think about how Louisville has arrived at this point. We sat with Coach Brom yesterday, and he said, we're going to find out about ourselves. Yeah. We're going to find out who we are. You're finding something out about this Louisville team tonight, aren't you? I feel like he had a lot of question marks coming into this game about Funny. just how they would respond to this environment, especially after last week, a disappointing performance albeit a win, right? They're finding out they got some fight, right? They're physical. They're matching the physicality of Notre Dame, which watching film coming into this week, I, I didn't know if they were going to be able to do. They are. And never underestimate emotion. 
yes. in college football. And attrition on the other side. What the recent weeks have been for Notre Dame with that battle against Ohio State right down to the wire. The battle with Duke right down to the wire. And then you got to come back on the road into a spot like this. Not just the physical drain of those games going down to the wire, the emotional drain. The highs and lows, the roller coaster that Notre Dame has been on the last few weeks. Ball start. Number four, offense. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. Let's back him up just a little bit. Notre Dame used that timeout. Try to get an opportunity for their offense before half. Tyree is the return man. He's at the 20 yard line expecting the travel stead punt. And Sam Hartman had the last second magic a week ago. Will he have a little something left before halftime? They will take over at the 20 yard line after a quick break. 7 7 from here at Louisville. Boost Infinite Halftime Report just minutes away. We've got Dan, we've got Boog, we've got Kevin here, we've got Georgia in control, we've got Texas going down, Alabama surviving. On the road, Jalen Milrow, a lot of noise about him. He played well in a hostile environment. I want to see if Notre Dame offensively can get their wide receivers running away from man coverage because they're not separating right now. They're going to need that in the second half. Back to you, Tess. Jordan, much more analysis coming your way. Sam Hartman on the run on first down as he slides down. And that clock continues to count down before halftime. Notre Dame with two timeouts. Yeah, still the two timeouts, so you want to have a sense of urgency, but the entire field is open right now. Runs are still at your disposal. Second down, and Hartman ripped down. That was Riger, who's been dealing with a knee issue. But he's full go tonight. Boy, and how about working on Joe Alt? Left tackle here. You're going to see Riger right here, one on one with Joe Alt. Possibly one of the best offensive linemen in the entire country, and just, oh, puts him on his butt. Riger, a guy you mentioned, he's had a chronic knee injury. And they've been excited about him getting healthy just because of the upside, the talent that he has. And not many times you'll see Joe Alt get pushed over the top and end up on his back. No, to your point, Joe Alt, whose father's the former NFL All-Pro John Alt, brother played pro hockey, he, he's got great athleticism. He's developed into an All-American level left, left tackle. And Mason Ryder comes up huge there to set up a third and 13 as a timeout was used. Notre Dame has one remaining. And this place is roaring, absolutely roaring, with third and 13 in the face of the Irish. Four man rush against Hartman. Launches it to nowhere. So 50 seconds remain. Irish punting, Louisville three timeouts. A lot of time left on the board. It's just a great job of this Louisville defense. I tell you what, I've been so impressed with the front seven from Louisville. I came into this game thinking that Notre Dame was going to have some success running the football. Obviously, protection has been great for Notre Dame, except for some blitzes last week against Duke. But so far tonight, Louisville has been the aggressor. from inside the five. Opportunity for Coleman with a return here from the 38. Here he goes to midfield. So this sets up very well for Louisville. And a reminder that coming up tonight after Georgia Tech and Miami, it's ACC Huddle. And that crew will give you the complete wrap up live from Miami on the ACC Network. Boy, last few words here 
for Jack Plummer from Jeff Brom. Maybe gave him two plays here, right? You got those timeouts. You can use those at your disposal. Kravelstedt's got a big leg, too, to the kicker. He's made from 53 this year. So it doesn't take much to put him in position to try to break this tie. Jamari Strass at the top of your screen. Pressure off the left side. Quickly gets it for nine yards to Thrash, who you mentioned, Jordan. Yeah, one-on-one -on -one coverage, safety roll to the field there. So just take the quick out. And pretty close to field goal range now as you get that timeout. And timeout is utilized by Louisville. Interesting conversation we had with Jeff Brom. And listen, nobody knows better than you the relationship of head coach and quarterback. But Brom was very honest. I mean, very honest in assessing his quarterback, Plummer, who he had. He coached for three years at Purdue. And then he goes off to Cal, gets the starting experience. And then now, with a new staff here, they wanted somebody who had familiarity with the offense. But he said he's got to relax, and he has to have a little more poise. Poise and know when to throw the ball away which as you get into field goal range here at the end of the second half you don't want to take points off the board right you got three in your bag if you get about 10 more yards or so so don't force a throw if it's not there right 30 something seconds left it's not there throw it away those are the decisions that he wants his sixth year quarterback to start to make a little bit more consistently and never more under the magnifying glass than 33 seconds left tied with number 10 Notre Dame we're trying to get some points on the board here before half expires. Notre Dame trying to stay alive for the college football playoff. That heartbreaking loss two weeks ago. Can't grab two. 33 ticks of the clock left. Jordan, he can't find anything. It was Riley Mills the first to get there, and then Burnham cleaned it up. That was excellent by the Notre Dame front. Boy, you want to stifle a team that's really good at zone? Another timeout here. Just get penetration. Look at the penetration here by Riley Mills. Great job by Mills, the big six foot five, 300 pounder, who was so active last week as well in that win at Duke. He had a career high seven tackles there. And he's one of those weight room freaks. I mean, look at that. It looks like those aren't even shoulder pads. Matt, that's a really good looking 306 pound dude. I mean, he might have a few abs there, Tess. <laughs> That is, a, that is a big man. Kind of reminds you of those big Watt brothers, right? Arms, big, long, lean, but still big and stout. And here on third and short here, they might need him once again. Again, Louisville still has that timeout. They can run the football here. Absolutely. I would guess they're going to try to get something quick through the air in the flats, maybe. Give that guy a chance. Travelstead, got a big leg. First year is the full-time place kicker, but he's hit from 53. So here we go, off the timeout, third and one. Jordan in the backfield with Plummer. Boy, thrash again and one-on-one -on -one at the top of your screen. So the defensive line stemming. And Jordan's going to have the first down. So they're inside the 40-yard line. They still have the one timeout, as you noted. And that clock, again, is going to pause here inside two minutes. We'll go back to the old traditional timing rules. Plummer, pressure off the edge, gets rid of it quickly and does so successfully to Thrash. So now they are in field goal range. Jamari Thrash had the nine-yard touchdown, and that final timeout is called by Louisville. And Thrash is a really good example of putting together a new roster, of taking advantage, of reworking a roster. He comes over from Georgia State, where he was just exceptional. Had a game against Charlotte there where he had 10 catches for 213 yards and immediately has been a success story at Louisville. Yeah, you want to get ahead of schedule as a new coach in a program, bring in a six-year quarterback that knows your system and get him a playmaker like Jamari Thrash. And right now, 11 seconds left, no timeouts. Can pick up a first down and that clock would pause, obviously, but you're in danger zone here of having a guy go down in bounds and not having time to get everybody on the ball and clock it. So they got to be real careful. Look to work the sidelines here. Howard Cross, big man in the middle who was just sensational a week ago. But Louisville. 
has played better than expected in what has been a wildly intriguing first half. Second and four. Plummer quick to the outside and smartly out is Kevin Coleman. Seven seconds remain. That was well done by Jack Plummer. Yeah, great work the sideline. Quick throw, high percentage. If it wasn't there, you could just throw it over his head. And now they'll trot the kicker out. But again, use that sideline. Kevin Coleman there, quick out, little cushion. Coach Hafe is a snapper, Hodges the holder, and the very talented Brock Travelstead to try to break the tie before halftime. And a timeout will be used by Marcus Freeman. Boy, and remember, Louisville's going to get the ball after half. That's right. So this is a good chance for them to try to double up here, get three points on the board, go into half up three, and you get the ball after half as well with a chance to build on that lead. You know, it's interesting. We keep going back to, the, uh, as I said, one of the fairest, most honest assessments I've ever heard from a head coach of his quarterback. And Brom said, Plummer gets streaky. Start, yeah. Started the game red hot, got a little choppy, and then a very nice little final moment here before halftime to set up his kicker. And a great job managing the two-minute drill, managing time underneath one minute with a few timeouts. It was perfect, and now in a really advantageous high percentage zone for this field goal. Travel step from 42 to try to give Louisville the lead before halftime over top 10 Notre Dame. And it is no good. Wide right. And we remain tied 7-7. Oh, good snap, good hold. Laces got spun away. This is the one of those where you line up for your slice tests, or line up for your draw, and you just hit it straight. Marcus Freeman says, that's it. Second full season as head coach. Of course, the rough patch to start last year before the team started gathering momentum. Louisville came out red hot. Defense did third job. Plummer hit thrash. And then Notre Dame came back to tie it. Well, this is as advertised with the atmosphere here, isn't it, Jordan? Crowd's been in it, and Louisville came to play. Katie. Thanks. Jack Plummer to set up the field goal when you get the ball back to start the second what do you need to see from this offense to get going well if we're going to throw the ball we got to catch the football and play pitch and catch so I think that's hurt us a couple times but I think we got to keep established in the run uh, this is a good defense so we just got to get get chunks we had too many negative plays defensively you found success getting after the quarterback what did you think of the defense's first half well they've done a good job uh, we, we want to bring pressure we want to affect the quarterback anytime you, get, you give that quarterback time he's going to tear us apart so we've done a good job at this point we've got some turnovers we just got to be a little more efficient on offense Thank you for the time. His defense has done a good job. Notre Dame's talented offense held in check to just that single touchdown. 7-7. Number 25 at home against his top 10 Irish team. Boys, boost, infinite halftime report still to come after these messages. Don't go anywhere. All-time record crowd here at Louisville where it's Saturday Night Football presented by Capital One. Louisville's defense holding Notre Dame's offense only 22 rushing yards, 7-7 seven, seven moments ago. Katie George with Coach Freeman. Coach Freeman, after Louisville's opening drive, your defense stifled that offense. What needs to continue here to start the second half? We're going to continue to tackle and continue to be aggressive on defense, continue to do what we're doing. Um, don't let up, man. As, ever since that first drive, defense has done a heck of a job making some adjustments and keeping the ball in front of us. Um, offensively, we obviously got to we gotta execute better. Like I told them, stop beating Notre Dame. When Notre Dame doesn't beat Notre Dame, we could be really good. We have to take care of the football. Protect our quarterback, and the quarterback has to take care of the ball. Thank you. Thank you. Sam Hartman Jordan has been sacked three times and they can't run the football right now right that's been the story Audrey Gestime came into the game leading the nation came into Saturday leading the nation with 672 yards and boy they've stalled out on the ground credit to Louisville they're gonna get the ball on offense but it's really been the defense for Louisville that's been the story of this first half Trying to prove they are a true playoff contender. 
Joe Tessitore alongside Jordan Rogers, Jesse Palmer on assignment for ABC this week. So Louisville goes out and starts the game, and they do something that nobody's done, and that is pick off Sam Hartman. Then they have a long touchdown drive, but then at the end, four straight punts and miss a 42-yard field goal. Yeah, they missed some opportunities late in that game, but they took advantage of the start. They milked the clock. That first quarter was gone in a blink. And on defense, they said, we're going to make Sam Hartman beat us. We're going to take Audrey Gessemay out of the game, stack the box. Notre Dame didn't have an answer as of yet. Plummer eight completions, 57 yards, touchdown pass, as he's going to open up the second half with a completion as he goes to thrash. Ball came out, and the Irish have it. Turnover, Notre Dame. That is Cam Hart with the fumble recovery, and just the second fumble that Louisville has lost this season. What a play for the Irish. Boy, and what a play by Cam Hart. It's a great route by Jamari Thrash. Sells the vertical, stops on a dime, and I believe he's trying to switch the ball to his right hand here. And Cam Hart gets his hand in there, knocks it loose, and boy, the game started with a big turnover by the Louisville defense. Now the second half, starting with Notre Dame with the big play, giving their offense a short field. 39-yard line, Cam Hart. What a swing if you consider that Louisville was trying to get points on the board, missed a field goal. They get the ball in the second half. Instead of what could have been a 10-point swing, it's Irish ball, short pitch, Estime, tackled for a loss. He is brought down by the very active T.J. Quinn, whose father, Terry, was once a star player for Louisville. Boy, Notre Dame likes to get these offensive linemen pulling. How do you beat that? Well, you just shoot the gap. T.J. Quinn says, I'm not waiting for that lineman to get around the corner. Shoots the vacancy there and makes a big negative play. Blake Fisher was chasing the play, second and 15. This after the turnover. Such an excellent play by Cam Hart, starting corner. Hartman on second and 15 has the time checks down to Estime and Estime always going forward with that leverage. Yeah, and they got to continue to lean on him. I think it's a really good check down there by Sam Harton trying to get the ball to Mitchell Evans down the seam. Good coverage by Louisville. Check it down. Get yourself in a third and manageable instead of a third and long. Nine yards to Estime. Third down and six. Notre Dame is just one of six on third down in the first half. Boy, again, just man coverage across the board. Mitchell Evans in the slot at the top of your screen. Right there, got a little cushion by his defender. Hartman, third and six, going to loft it deep. He's got Tyree, but it's off his hands. Incomplete. Boy, that is the matchup that they want. Chris Tyree on Benjamin Perry. This is just a slot fade and man coverage. Great route by Tyree. Ball is on the money. Tyree just a little late adjusting. I mean, he is a running back, but it's transferred to wide receiver. That's the toughest catch where you got to track it over your shoulder like the Willie Mays catch. Really tough one for Tyree to bring down. Spencer Schrader, a 53-yard attempt to break the tie. He's hit from 54. And he puts it through. Spencer Schrader with a booming field goal. So they cash the fumble recovery by Cam Hart into three. Schrader, who set the Notre Dame record with a 54-yarder at NC State. Plenty, and I mean plenty of leg. Lift rotation through. 10-7, Irish. We First sellout they've had since they played Notre Dame in 2019. Amazing scene. This is the all-time record-breaking crowd here at Louisville. It is 10-7 Irish after the 53-yard field goal. Jordan Rogers, it is time for the Aflac trivia question. Oh boy. Teddy and Lamar are the only two Louisville quarterbacks who were first rounders. But there were two who were second rounders in the NFL. So that went in the second round. I know one. Good. Need two. 
I got no shot on the other though. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, absolutely well, there, no there shot. There is Lamar's number eight. Lamar under center. Look at this in his face as they set up the screen. Jordan, and he was brought down by Leofau from behind. Boy, on a screen, you want to at least get a little bit of somebody. A little bit of touch. I mean, yeah, just, I mean, get just in the way a little bit. Watch the right side here. Eric Miller trying to decide which one. Pick the inside guy and just, just touch him a little bit. As a quarterback, former quarterback, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, especially if big Riley Mills is right in your face. Second and seven. Jordan. There is not much there as it was clogged up with Jean Baptiste who's really been playing well the past couple of weeks. Yeah the pass rush specialist Jean Baptiste his game really improving against the run you saw that there on what we call a long stick working from the outside all the way in using his hands really well forcing this third medium here. Third down and five. Palmer looking for an opportunity and he finds it wide open for a first down. It's Amari Huggins Bruce. Boy, this is a mesh concept. You got two crossers and a basic dig behind it. Good coverage underneath. And Plummer does a great job just buying a little time. Wait for that basic to come open in the void of the zone coverage over the middle. And it was Huggins Bruce there with a big third down pickup. That goes for 16 yards. Boy, you feel like Louisville really needed that. After the way this first, excuse me, second half started with the turnover. Play action, Plummer. Throws it to the outside of Chris Bell. Well, we asked you, okay, they had a couple first round quarterbacks. You know who they are, all time superstars. The Athlac trivia answer as to who were the two Louisville quarterbacks who were drafted in the second round, Jordan. Well, there's one of them. Who you got? Brian Brown. There he is. He's the offensive coordinator, all time great. That was an easy one. Here. We met with him just the other day. And then the one. other's Browning Nagel, who played back in the early 90s for Coach Schnellenberger, was a Fiesta Bowl MVP. Of course, drafted by the Jets. I was born in 88 out in California, so I had, a, a, had no shot on that one. <laughs> that is a stretch to answer that, Affleck, then. And thank you for making me feel very old. Second and 10. Look at Brom with a man in his face, getting it complete downfield as he connects and is able to get it to Joey Gatewood. Well done by Jack Plummer. Boy, pressure comes from the right side. You got a sixth year quarterback. What do you do? You don't have a quick hop, but you buy a little time. Drift away, drift away. You saw him even look to the right. He knows how much time he has to let that wheel route develop down the sideline. Joey Gatewood there bringing that one down. 18 yards and another first down. And to your point, a couple big completions here, moving the chains. And Louisville needed after that disastrous start to the second half offensively with the turnover. Jordan cuts back against the grain. He's able to make his way near the 30 yard line. Botello with the tackle. Jeff Brom said, We want this to just be a well managed, tight game. Get us to the second half, find ourselves, find some confidence, let the crowd grow into it. That's the kind of game they have right in front of them against a top 10 Notre Dame team. Second four. Jordan tackled for a loss. It was Bertrand knifing in. Excellent job by J.D. Bertrand. Boy, that's like the second or third time Bertrand has just gone right through the B or C gap to blow up this run. You're going to see him just knife right here. Get across the face of Eric Miller. That right tackle was trying to get seal that backside. Tell you what. He completely changed his preparation in the offseason. Talked to a few NFL superstars, former NFL superstars at his position, and his game is elevated. 
He's a super smart guy as well. Third down and six. Plummer. What can he find here? Shallow cross is going to be short of the line to gain as Henderson quickly tackles Kariski, the big tight end. Fourth and short. Yeah, short, but I think they're staying out there and going for this one. Offense on the field. No hesitation from Jeff Brom for a moment, and then all of a sudden he sends out Travelstead. Oh, a little bit of a groan from the crowd, too. I thought with the momentum of this drive that you might just go tempo and try to pick one up quick. Travelstead, who just set the school record with a 53-yard field goal. Fourth quarter at NC State. That put them up with three with five and a half to play. This from 44 to tie the game. That is well struck. Excellent rotation and dead on target line kick. And oh, do we have a fun one here. 10 to 10 among these ranked teams. Jeff Brom's daughter Brooke is keeping the family tradition alive by playing quarterback for St. Bernard's all-girl flag football team. At 12 years old, she's got an arm on her. She threw for three touchdowns in last Sunday's game, and they say the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Brooke's extremely competitive. Dad says he can coach her hard, but she's got some sass to her. He says she'll give it right back to him. And guys, you can tell Jeff lights up when he talks about his daughter Brooke. Katie, I think there needs to be St. Bernard Wildcats merch out there right now. Look at Brooke go. Dropping dimes. Travel said moments ago with the 44-yarder as we are tied up here at Louisville. Many around this program, many around this town that could sense this one coming, Jordan. There's buzz building up here in Louisville this week. Last night I'm having dinner at 610 Magnolia. Chef Lee putting on a show, everybody talking about this game, really believing, and that's what Coach Brom has done. He's galvanizing the community, galvanizing the team, and you see it here with the play on the field. Well, the prodigal son has returned, right? He's brought a pretty exciting brand of football here that's taken Notre Dame into deep water in the middle of the third quarter. Estime patiently waiting for blockers as he utilizes them out to the 31-yard line. Cam Kelly with the tackle. Boy, just a slow, slow start for Roger Estime. It is. And I can't stress enough, he came into this Saturday leading the entire country in rushing. Just 19 yards, 2.4 a pop tonight for Estime. Louisville's making it tough on him. Came in at seven yards a carry. Second and four. Hartman, quick game out to Chris Tyree. Able to split defenders. It'll be third and one. Katie. Jordan, it's interesting. Oscar Estime told me he thinks he gets better as the game goes on. He says he feels himself building speed and momentum throughout the game. He doesn't actually plateau. He says he peaks late in the game, finishing stronger than he started. So we'll see if that's the case here tonight for the Irish. Katie, you're going to need to get over to the trainers there because he just came limping off the field, took his helmet off, and clearly favoring his leg as Jabron Payne now comes in at third and one. So Katie will be on top of that. Hartman under center on third and one. Payne. Oh, he stopped in the backfield. Knifing in was Alderman and a tackle for loss from this fiery, pesky Cardinals defense. Boy, we kept saying third and short, just handed off downhill, huh? Didn't account for Alderman. Again, knifing through here. Nobody blocking there. Not sure if that was Blake Fisher supposed to come down there or there's just no one accounting for the backside linebacker either way. He beat Payne to the point of attack and another third and short that Notre Dame can't convert. Jordan, they're one of eight on third down. Louisville has five tackles for loss. Coleman on the run. And the punt return where he took an aggressive route. Mark of a fighter moment is brought to you by Modelo. I'll tell you what, the mark of a fighter, we've seen it all night from this Louisville defense. They needed big plays, they got them. Third and shorts, sacks, interception to start the game. Louisville has been the aggressor. They have matched and surpassed the physicality of this Notre Dame team that is known for being physical on both in the line of scrimmage and there nothing bigger than that third down stop right there 
by Jalen Alderman. These are spots that Notre Dame has dominated. 30 game yeah. regular season win streak against ACC teams. And here they are in a deep battle, just like last week. The Jet action goes big for Huggins Bruce. Nineteen yards on the run from Amari Huggins Bruce Boy, these jet sweeps watch Botello here back in the game after being suspended the first half for the targeting call puts him in a bind Do I set the edge or do I knife in to try to get the run play that jet sweep really putting that edge rusher in a bind on the backside there and a great Wrinkle by by Jeff Brown there Jawar Jordan it's the hole off right tackle. Jordan, here he goes. This place is going to rock. Stead puts it through the cards the upset seeking cards are up a touchdown the two key blocks here Dwayne Martin is going to get the kick out right here and Kariski is going to get the down block to open up this hole tight end and fullback working in conjunction there and a huge hole for Jawar Jordan you cannot give him that kind of daylight he will make you pay as Notre Dame just found out Jordan's speed is obviously his biggest asset, but he has good vision, too. Brian Brom says if he can get one crease, he can take it to the house. Last week against NC State, that never came, guys. But we've seen the explosiveness this season. If he can get through the line of scrimmage, get through the first level, he can make you pay, and he just made Notre Dame pay there. He came in today, Katie, to that point, leading all the FBS players with three plays of 70-plus yards. He just went for 45. He's got a buck 11 on the night. And his team has a touchdown lead over Notre Dame, who's playing for college football playoff survival. Price on the return. Price able to keep his balance in a great return by Jadarion Price. All right, and this, if you're Notre Dame, is why you bring in a veteran quarterback yes. that has played a ton of football. He's been in moments where there's adversity in the second half. We saw last week what he did with their back against the wall. They got to find a way to get some consistency on offense going, and they got to figure it out pretty quick here. Last week was the 95 yard game winning drive at Duke. Sam Hartman had that sensational scramble on fourth and 16. Got five and a half to go here in the third. And they're trailing on the road again. Hartman pumps, goes downfield, and that is the answer. Mitchell Evans, Jordan Rogers, you said to me at halftime, you gotta get the ball to Big 88. Find your best player. Oh, but flag is down. Number 54. Oh. That's on the right tackle, Blake Fisher. A face mask is going to walk this back. Boy, watch Blake Fisher here. Right tackle. He's going to get his right hand extended. And just right there gets a little bit of the face mask. Gets that hand up too high. And it's going to negate an incredible play call. You pump the tunnel screen to Chris Tyree. As they see the face mask there that we saw earlier in the game, and you hit Mitchell Evans down the seam, but all for nothing now first and 25. Love, blockers in front, and as Love takes it ahead to the 27-yard line. It was first and 25. Brown was with the tackle.
And we're going to see a heavy dose of Jeremiah Love. Remember, we saw Audrick Estime go off the sideline last drive. Looked a little banged up. He's standing there, but. Katie just got the report from the Notre Dame medical staff. They say Estime is fine to return, but right now is Jeremiah Love, the freshman. Second and 20. Hartman with time and then had to check down the Love at the last second. How active is this defense? Ron English, the defensive coordinator, you see him there. He said, I was preaching, play right through to the end, reminding him that's who you are, that's how we play. But he emphasized the importance of changing up the looks, especially on a third down. What picture are you giving Sam Hart, Hartman pre-snap, and then how are you changing it to try to confuse him? Third and 13. Hartman drives that ball complete as Evans is weaving his way to the back end of Louisville and a big chunk play of 25 yards for the Gold Domers. Boy, watch this route by Mitchell Evans. You're going to see him right here. He's going to work up. He's actually going to do a little twist at the top of this route. Looks like he wants to break it out at first, then notices the leverage, so works back inside. That's a great adjustment. That's not scripted, not drawn up like that. It's a great adjustment by Evans there and, and Hartman to put it on. And Estime is back in. Just like Katie said, he is fine, and he goes ahead for two yards. Yeah, you kind of saw him working out his legs a little bit on the sideline. Not sure if maybe got a Charlie horse to that right quad. Still, still looks like he's he's hobbling a little bit. Well, he is so intense. He is so emotional, and he runs hard. His offensive line, Joe Alt, big left tackle. So the guy runs so hard, he wants it so bad, it just oozes into the work we do. We want to work just as hard for him. Second and eight. Hartman pulls it, run pass option, and he's going to slide down short of the line to gain, but that was a good decision by Sam Hartman. Third and three coming for Marcus Freeman's team. Offensive coordinator Jared Parker and this group of rowdies been on their feet all night long supporting that defense coached by Ron English. across the backside tackles face before he can make that block squeezes right through that C gap and another third and short Notre Dame coming up short they're going to test the leg big time of Schrader to tie the record that is a bazooka leg. Spencer Schrader from 54, he does it again. Ties the record at Notre Dame that he has already set. The impact, and right on through. Marcus Freeman knows he's got a weapon with Spencer Schrader. From here in Louisville, you're watching the ACC on ESPN. By the way, Florida State moved their mark to 5-0 today. The win against Virginia Tech. 17-13, Louisville on top. Let's go to the studio and Kevin. Test time now for our All-State Good Hands play of the day. Best tight end in the country. It is Brock Bowers, 24th touchdown catch. Second most in school history. Georgia just dominating at home. 44-13. Back to Tesh, Jordan and Katie. You know what?
what time it is. And Louisville fans, they say the time is now to get to 6 and 0 with a signature win. A win that would be on the very short list of all time greats in program history. But this Notre Dame team is up for the fight as they quickly get it out to Jamari Thrash. Boy, same little play they started the second half with on the fumble by Thrash. Feel really good about that matchup and man coverage. Thrash continuing to create separation. And now they switch Benjamin Morrison to that side on, on Thrash. Jordan off right tackle. Keeps his footing and then gets out of bounds. Well, you know, Tess, one thing we haven't seen tonight that Jeff Brom made a point is how many trick plays they carried into this game. Yes. This would be a heck of a moment here late in the game to see one, but he mentioned there's a whole handful of them they brought into this game. He's been known through the years to pull it out. Closing seconds of the third quarter. They may just look over and let this tick on down. Here at home in front of a record breaking crowd as they are pushing top 10 Notre Dame to the limit. Saturday Night Football presented by Capital One returns after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Yes or no, Jordan Rogers, do you love ball? Look at this. Do you love college ball? How can you not? Do you love when you feel it in your chest? When the pulse of a stadium goes through your bones? It's something here tonight. Man, oh man, this is how we're starting the fourth quarter, folks. LNN Stadium with the home team up on top 10 Notre Dame to start the fourth. Now they settle in for their offense to try to do something. Jordan goes ahead. Moments ago, Katie was with Coach Brom. Coach Brom, what do you got to do to close this out in the fourth? Well, we got a full four, uh, quarter to play. I think right now we got to stay aggressive. We got to continue to move the ball, eliminate negative plays, and our defense has to continue to be aggressive as well. How have you found success moving the ball the second half? Well, I just think uh, you know we've executed better. We've been winning some one-on-one -on -one matchups. We've taken care of the ball. We've, we've thrown and caught the ball better. So I just think we got to continue to do that. We got a long, long game left to play. We got to execute this quarter. Thank you. Long game left to play against a team that's well conditioned for late drama, the Irish. 31, Jordan gonna go ahead for what should be a first down based on that mark. Boy, what stands out there from Jeff Brown? Twice. Got to. He said aggressive. Got to be aggressive. Right, you, you, you don't win games like this by just playing small ball in the fourth quarter with Notre Dame, 10th ranked team in the country, in your house. You stay aggressive. I bet Brahms looking for something there on his play sheet. Looks like they're calling for a measurement here. 2023 in a sport with more technology <laughs> known to man, and we're going to walk out hey, with a bunch hey, of dudes hey. with chains and sticks. Come on now. 14 minutes to play. These guys are just trying to get their paycheck like us, Tess. First down, Louisville. What a game we got here tonight, and what hype is already building for next Saturday on ABC. 3.30 Eastern, Pac-12 matchup. Number eight, Oregon. Number seven, Washington at Husky Stadium. Matchup of excellent quarterbacks, of intense rivalry, and of great, and I mean great significance when it comes to the big picture of the college football playoff. Speaking of the college football playoff, we mentioned to start this game, Notre Dame's margin for error is gone. That is, had the heartbreaker against Ohio State, 17 to 14, last play of the game. First down. And as Jordan comes back into the backfield with Plummer under center. Play action. You said stay aggressive. Let's see if Plummer does. Has to throw it away. Plummer throws incomplete. That is a really good job. They were trying to hit a little trick play, sending Jawar Jordan 
after that fake up the seam. Little pressure on Jack Plummer, and they practiced this week. We talked to Brian Brown. They practiced throwing the football away. Isn't that something? That was a lengthy discussion we had with Drills, that. practice, time spent on just how to throw the football away. That sounds dumb. I know it does. But in moments like that, instead of forcing the football, up four in the fourth quarter, just eat it. Live to play another down. And don't take risk. Yes. When you throw it away, throw it far away. Second and ten, Plummer. Well covered downfield. That was Morrison on thrash. Ooh. This is really tight coverage by Benjamin Morrison. In great position on Jamari Thrash right here. Ball's a little bit behind. He did he did he get his head around? Didn't get his head around. A little bit of contact. Any quarterback wants that call. Well, Morrison's an exceptional corner, isn't he? Great. Third down and ten. Big opportunity for the Irish defense. Play clock counting down. He did not get it off. Let's see if they were able to call a timeout or not. Prior to the snap, delay of game. Nope. Offense, five yard penalty. Still third down. Just had that sense the way Plummer looked over at Coach Brom and then tried to get back in position. So that'll push him back. Tell you what, though, in a game like this, you want all your timeouts. So I think that five yards is, yeah, third and 10, not easy, third and 15, not easy. Not a ball to be played here. Third and 15. They go with the screen, thrash. That's not going anywhere as he is wrestled down immediately by Benjamin Morrison, and a flag does come in at the 45 yard line. Boy, another great personal foul, face mask, number eight. Ooh, wow. Marcus Freeman doubled over, said, come on now. Leah foul. We're walking off the field. We're getting the ball. And instead, it's a first down Louisville. Boy, Notre Dame fans are not going to like watching this one. Leah foul coming back, trying to track. The ball carrier, it's well behind the play, and he's kind of getting action from two of the Louisville offensive linemen. First down, Louisville, after the penalty on Leah Fowl. Will it be costly? Garendo, straight ahead, took a hard hit from Bertrand, but went forward with his momentum for five well earned yards. An absolutely massive call there on what would have been forcing a punt or forcing a fourth and long look at that discrepancy Jeez. yards per rush Notre Dame can't get the run game going meanwhile Louisville just steady just staying on schedule tonight Isaac Arendo remains the running back flanking Plummer second and five that only goes for a couple of yards. Howard Cross was involved there. All right, so Maris Leofau right here. You're going to see as he's kind of falling, just gets a little bit of the face mask there. I mean, he definitely did, right? I don't think it was as much of a reaction to him getting hit by the other guy and falling as anything there. But still, hand on the face mask. And with that Louisville in field goal range already, a third and three. Plummer on third down. As going low for the ball was Thrash, and that is a first down cards. Oh, Jamari Thrash, look at this catch. Coming back to the football, a little far inside. Plummer would have liked that a little more on the outside, but great adjustment. Gonna keep it on the ground with Jordan inside the 10 into the end zone. Oh my! He's done it again.
What's poppin', folks? Jack Harlow. Loving on his home team. And what do we have here? Little old Louisville with the first year staff with a roster back filled with transfers, but with a superstar running back who went big time again. And number 10, Notre Dame is in trouble. Former Louisville hoop star Donovan Mitchell is loving their current football star, Jawar Jordan. Boy, that touchdown run. Absolute unbelievable job by the offensive line. What I love here is the split zone action is going to pull the linebacker first. This guy is going to pull him. And then what you're going to see is a massive double team right here on Howard Cross, who's playing better than any defensive lineman in the country. Look at that movement. And Jawar Jordan up through the seam for the touchdown. Well, Jordan, we know the speed and vision are givens, but Jordan told me people underestimate his strength. He feels like he can break tackles and fight for extra yards. He says he loves being underrated. It keeps the fire burning inside, but deep down, Jordan believes he's one of the best running backs in the country. Katie, he has 142 yards Ooh. and those two huge touchdowns tonight. I'd say he's making an argument for that. Jeremiah Love, nice spin move as he goes ahead for 11 yards. Let's go to the studio to Kevin. Test time now for our Chick-fil-A move on the field. 24 all Colorado, Arizona State under a minute to go. Shador Sanders, the Javon Antonio. That's a big gain, and they would get in field goal position. Alejandro Mata, 43 yards out. The Buffaloes back in the win column, 27-24. Rico Flores with the reception. His knee was down before he was able to cut up field. He had a go low for the pass from Sam Hartman. So his knee is down, and that is a loss of one. And Audrey Gestime checks back into the game. Again, he's been in and out of that lineup. Limped off, still testing out those legs here before this snap. Notre Dame cannot afford a second loss. A college football playoff contender, a top 10 team whose only loss was the heartbreaker on the last play against Ohio State two weeks ago. This is different. Can they dig out of this hole now? Second 11, Hartman. Hartman with a man right on top of him. TJ Quinn was all over Sam Hartman. Officials are conferring. Quarterback was outside the tackle box. Third down. They said he was outside the tackle box, so no grounding. It's third and 11. And as has been the case all night long, you will hear a wall of sound. Rising up from the field to the top of LNN Stadium. Third and 11. Hartman. Incomplete. Evans was covered by Ben Perry. Boy, trying to find their go-to tight end, Mitchell Evans. Love the play call. This is just better coverage. Benjamin Perry all over Mitchell Evans in man coverage. Physical. Defense there by Perry. And really a frustrating night for Mitchell Evans. This is fourth down and 11 from their own 35. Fourth down and 11 from their own 35. And a timeout is going to be called by Louisville. That sums up the night for the Irish, doesn't it? We will take the timeout. Fourth down when we return. ABC Saturday Night Football is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Iroquois Park, just a few minutes 
from this stadium, and that's the Jack O' Lantern spectacular. But the spectacular right now is the way that this Louisville team is proving that they're for real. It right now is fourth and 11 for Notre Dame. They're on their own 35, trailing by 11. Marcus Freeman has his offense on the field. Sam Hartman is on the field for a fourth and 11 after the Louisville timeout. Desperate times. How does it play out? Fourth and 11 for the Irish. He's chased back to the 20. And that ball is incomplete. A turnover on downs with 9.42 to play. Wow. Tess, I don't know about the decision to go for it. You got nine minutes and 40 plus seconds left in this game. You're down 11. Louisville singles everybody up, so they bring five. That means one-on-one -on -one across the board. Hartman just not enough time, not enough room to step up in the pocket and try to find Evans. Ben Perry was injured on that play, the starting outside linebacker. Louisville's medical staff is out on the field. They will have the ball at the 35-yard line when we come back. Rated M for Mature. Back here at Louisville, Joe Tessitore, Jordan Rogers, Katie George. Moments ago, Marcus Freeman made the decision, trailing by 11, fourth and 11 from their own 35. 9.42 to play, and he went for it from his own 35-yard line. A turnover on downs, and that's where Louisville takes over, Jordan Rogers. Feels a little desperate. 9.50 left in the game. If that's midfield, maybe, but it's fourth and 11. I thought it was too early for that call by Marcus Freeman in Notre Dame. Jawar Jordan's had a big night, takes a big hit on the first down run as D.J. Brown just leveled him there. Something to think about. Maybe going into that decision is knowing the emotional toil that the last two weeks have taken on your team, right? Do they have the emotional and physical stamina to go all the way down to the wire? Or did he need to try to force the issue earlier here in the fourth quarter? To your point, Ohio State two weeks ago comes down to all the drama, the 10 men on the field, the last play, Duke last week, the magic from Hartman with the 95-yard drive and the big win with 31 seconds to go. And then that. They run Jordan again, predictably up the middle, just a gain of two. It's an interesting night here with Kentucky playing Georgia, of course, the bitter rival of Louisville, and they are getting absolutely waxed. And we just heard a big roar when that score was put up. And then the Louisville team here coming in 5-0, and but people doubting them, saying they got to prove themselves. What are they really? You're finding out. Jeff Brom, instant impact with this program. Going to use all that play clock, third and seven. Pitch, Dorendo to the corner and forced out. Well, I tell you what, third time we've seen that speed option play. I'm not sure I'd really seen much of it, if any of it at all, watching Louisville on film. So that's something they saw in this week of preparation going, when we get some of these short sides, these nub sides, or these open sides. We like that. And that was a call just to say, hey, let's be safe. We're in field goal range. Let's make sure we at least get three out of this drive. Brock Travelstead, excellent field goal kicker. On to try to push this lead to two touchdowns. 45-yard attempt is good. Irish went for it. They didn't get it. Louisville used a bit of the clock and adds a field goal. College football rankings are brought to you by Goodyear. Boy, we've had a heck of a day here. How about the Red River rivalry? Are you kidding me? Oh, that was Oklahoma. Awesome. Dylan Gabriel taking it down the field to punch that one in and win it late in that game. Ohio State, a little troubled Maryland early, but they ended up pulling away. 
in Georgia, like we mentioned just a second ago, an absolute beatdown of a team that matched their physicality last year was 16 to 6, not so much this year. And now the decision to go for it on that fourth. Now it's a 14 point game, two touchdown game, where if you punt there, you're still a touchdown, two point conversion and a field goal. You're still in that range at 11 points, but now you need at least two touchdowns here if you're Notre Dame with seven and a half left. Veteran Hartman is capable. He has shown that. What do you got in the studio, Kevin Nagani? It's time now for our AT&T 5G studio update. Miami trying to stay undefeated after a Tyler Van Dyke pick. Georgia Tech's Jamal Haynes going in for the score right here. Yeah. Miami gets the ball again. Van Dyke, they're driving. Oh, no, not again. Jacoby George. Look at the real estate. Van Dyke brings him down, but another mistake right now. Tech up 14 to 10 on the ACC network, Tess. What kind of script can Sam Hartman come up with here for late drama? We've had plenty of it in recent weeks with the Irish. Hartman intercepted. Devin Neal on the return. The transfer from Baylor steps up big. And Sam Hartman, who came into the night, having started the season with 145 passes without throwing an interception, has been picked off twice. Well, you're going to see Gilbert Frierson blitzing right here. He's going to get picked up by Audrick Estime, but it's really the pressure that starts to get in Sam Hartman's face here right there at the end. See how he's throwing it and leaning back a little bit? That causes that ball to sail. Hands up. And just sailed that one a little bit, trying to get Mitchell Evans on an over route. It was there, but it was the pressure in the face that caused that errant throw. And Wow. How quickly things can change. First and goal after the return. As Devin Neal made the most of it. Ball start, number 51. Offense, five yard penalty, still first down. What a frustrating night for Sam Hartman. As we mentioned, the implications of this game. He was brought to Notre Dame to help them take that next step, not just get to the college football playoff again, but compete for a national championship. And that all but dissipating right in front of this Louisville crowd with seven minutes left here in the fourth. First and goal after the penalty as Jordan is going to be taken back. We brought it up over the course of our preparation this week, this stretch for Notre Dame of the game against Ohio State, the game against Duke, knowing you got USC, and then all of a sudden Louisville pops on the schedule as a 5-0 team, as a team that believes, as a team that's dangerous. What a stretch. Four straight, you know, four straight night games. That's new territory. Another top 25 matchup. Four consecutive ranked opponents they're in the midst of. That's the first time that's been the way for the Irish since the year 2000. And it's tough to do after week. Jordan on the I formation as he was tripped up by Kaiser. But we're under six and a half to play and it's a two touchdown lead for Louisville. You mentioned the gauntlet. I, I just think we're we're seeing the physical toll that this took those two games especially took on this team. I mean this defensive front for Notre Dame Howard Cross included have played at a level that was really unmatched going into this game and they've been physically pushed around by this Louisville offensive line. They really have and Howard Cross was as good as anybody in the entire country coming into this game and, and he's been, been neutralized been quiet so far. He had 13 tackles against Duke. Yeah. But he's the only power five defensive lineman with a double digit tackle game. Plummer. And it'll just a dart ahead inside the 15 yard line. Just bleeding more clock. You set things up for the special teams unit to come on out. A 
look up there and you say, hey, you can push this thing to a three possession game. And Travelstead is tasked with that. Brock Travelstead on to attempt a 32 yard field goal for Rule. And there's a hopeless feeling if you're Sam Hartman as that clock continues to tick down and Louisville is potentially pushing this lead further. They're going to be celebrating deep into the night. We got Donovan Mitchell hanging out with Jack Harlow. It's that kind of night in Louisville. Top shelf bourbon coming their way. The college football playoff semifinals and the college football playoff national championship on ESPN. Ah, uh, yes, the college football playoff. Where when you're a big time contender like Notre Dame, grabbing a second loss like this is a dagger. Jordan, I want to remind you that the NHL season starts Tuesday on ESPN. Got an opening night triple header. You up for it? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big Preds guy. Oh, well, you got the Predators Lightning going to get things going. 5.30. Let's go. That's going to start off the much-anticipated opening night triple header of the NHL. Some of the best TV music you'll hear in all production, my friend. 30 to 13. Louisville top 25. And now they're saying we're going to kick right through it. And they're taking down Hartman again. Fourth sack of the night for this Cards defense who has completely over delivered. Cam Wilson and Gelati getting it. Aston Gelati, little TE stunt once again. At his sack total came in with five, top five in the country in sacks. This Louisville defense. Has no stop. You got seven TFLs. That's way off the mark. Hartman's already thrown two interceptions. You know, Ron English is the defensive coordinator. Second go round with Coach Brom. And he was stressing this week. He loves how hard they play right to the finish. He said since the beginning, remember, there are new staff, so you're getting to know kids. He said that was the one thing that was so obvious that they play to the end always. And he said, that's the last thing I'm going to say to them before we hit the field. Play right through to the end. That's what they're doing, Jordan Rogers. Hartman on third and 19. To that point, that's, that's what was crazy. I kept asking Ron when we sat down with him, like schematically, like, you know, what can you do to take away Evans? And, and how did, schematically are you going to get pressure on Hartman? And he just kept responding with, it's about the effort these guys yeah. play with. It's about playing through the whistle. It's about being physical. There really hasn't been a special sauce tonight. It's just been physicality from Louisville that has just overwhelmed this Notre Dame front, overwhelmed every aspect of the line of scrimmage tonight. An excellent Notre Dame offensive yes. line, especially at tackles with Fisher and Hall. Excellent. And this is what you see again on fourth and seven. It's Riger. I mean, you just mentioned it. As per well, year comes away with the ball. Joe Alt, number eight on Mel Kuyper's big board, number two offensive tackle in the entire country, headed into the NFL draft next year, probably a top 10 pick. And Louisville, for the second time tonight, is going to put 76 on his rear. I mean, this is, again, this is this is an attitude. It is. There's, there's, there's nothing special about the scheme. This is just Louisville saying, you know what? We're going to punch you in the face and see how you respond. That's right. This old school Mike Tyson right here in the hometown of Muhammad Ali. Everybody's got a plan in the hometown of that guy. What kind of parties Jack Harlow hosting tonight? And does he have Jordan Rogers' cell phone number? All those analysts that said Notre Dame going to come in here, get another one. Jack Harlow's going, yeah, okay, hey, big head. Now what? You know what this field's going to look like in about three and a half minutes, my man. 
because you go through the history of Louisville and Katie George knows this better than anybody. Tess it's going to look like it did on the night of the 2006 game against West Virginia. I was here as a little girl. The field was rushed. Fans were ecstatic. That was three versus five. Then 2016 when Lamar Jackson busted on the scene and worked Florida State. That was a huge moment in this program's history. But tonight it feels a little bit different because it's Notre Dame. I don't know if I'd call this a one sided rivalry but it means a great deal to this fan base to beat a team a brand like Notre Dame whereas beating Louisville probably isn't that significant for Irish fans but it, it matters here a great deal and it matters because it's Jeff Brom. Jeff Brom whose number 11 jersey is honored here who was a three year starter who ranks among all the greats in career touchdown passing passing yards and of course went on to great head coaching success and he said it time again with his brother Brian who's also an all time great in the offensive coordinator. They were always looking when will Jeff come home. What will it look like. That's what it looks like. Second down and ten. The buzz was created. The buy in was there and now a signature and I mean an all time signature short list win when you consider the circumstances Jordan because the team back in 2006 you knew they were good. The team in 2016 had a superstar. This team was put together with a year one staff patchworked a bit. 25 players they got from the portal only three other teams in the entire country had more. You're not expected to do this when you add that many players. Jeff Brom kept mentioning we're going to find out who we are tonight. I think they find found out they're built for it. Absolutely built for it. It started from the first snap of the game. The interception It started with Jack Plummer on offense making secondary re reaction plays and that defense all night was swarming the football physical up front. Jawar Jordan in that run game after being absent last week got going in time and time again when Notre Dame had a sliver of hope an opportunity that Louisville defense dashed it. Jawar Jordan. It's the two big touchdowns and then the defense five times they sacked Sam Hartman. Plummer on third and seven and as he gets it to Turner coach Brom has a history of big wins you know when he was at Purdue Iowa got up to number two in 2021 you remember that he toppled them Michigan State they were number three he dismissed them the big one was when Ohio State was number two in 2018 for coach Brom but this one's going to be extra special the homecoming signature win the brand yep that's across the field that's a big part of it and also the implications for that brand the implications for Notre Dame thought to be a championship contending team their college football playoff opportunity is all but done after tonight you know what I marvel at you and I were prepping this game all week we took a ride up to South Bend spent the day there if there was anything that you thought was assured it was the advantage that Notre Dame had on both the offensive and defensive line that's been where Louisville's been at their best which you didn't see last week against NC State as a team that got stymied up front the offensive line couldn't get pushed they couldn't run the football that's what makes this special that's what makes Jeff Brom special you went through the big games that he was able to navigate upsets and another one coming here tonight as Travelstead continues his big night Some guys are just able to get their kids to perform at the highest level in the biggest moments. And Jeff Brom has proven, now as the prodigal son of Louisville, that he can do that time in and time out. And man, this is this is a special one. Marcus Freeman made that decision to go for it from his own 35-yard line on fourth and eleven. Didn't get it was a turnover on downs and with that Louisville's been just coasting in since and Notre Dame 30 game regular season win streak against ACC teams 30 regular season games against ACC teams that's coming to an end tonight 50.
18 consecutive games on the road against ACC opponents have been wins. That's coming to an end tonight. They hadn't lost a regular season game to an ACC opponent since 2017, Jordan. I just go back to that fourth and 11. Imagine if you punt that, if you're Notre Dame. And then Louisville, instead of smelling the goal line, they go, we got 80 yards. Let's just try to milk some of this clock. Maybe you'll force another punt, get the ball back only down 11. I mean, that, that fourth and 11 told your team, we're not built to go four quarters right now. We need to try to get back ahead and tie this thing up soon. And didn't go in their favor, and Louisville's just piled on since that point. Hartman able to get it to Jaden Thomas. Remember, he wasn't available for the game at Duke last week. Dealing with a hamstring. It was a full goal all week in practice this week. And hobbling a little bit there as well. Hartman with a man in his face, and that is incomplete as he was trying to get Merriweather. Been a big night for Jawar Jordan. Had the two long touchdown runs. Guy who started his career at Syracuse. He's had some masterful games recently. But tonight is the high water mark of his college football career. He showed that explosive speed again. This is the big tight end, Mitchell Evans. What an absolute rope there by Sam Hartman. Again, I, I don't want this game to feel like an indictment on Notre Dame's physicality and where they are, the caliber of team they are. They had an absolute gauntlet of the last two weeks that just absolutely drained the physical and emotional bandwidth of this team. And you're seeing it. That's. Incomplete to the end zone in a program where obviously you're not getting many breaks. This past week, about a third of the team had midterms. Yeah. There are midterms coming up on South Bend's campus this coming week. You're playing yet another night game against yet another ranked opponent. You got USC next week. That's the stretch. That's the reality of college football. And it can catch up with you. In any team on paper, you said, okay, you're going to win all three or four of these ranked games back to back to back. Probably not. This one just caught up in Notre Dame. Hartman. Man in his face again as the ball was affected as he released it. And a flag comes down back at the 33 yard line. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Number nine, defense. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. That's on Gelati at the end of that play. Jordan, this game was tied at seven at halftime, right? And Louisville yeah. gets the ball. Remember, they missed the field yeah. goal. They had an opportunity to go up. They get the ball to start the second half. They fumble. They fumble a couple plays into the second half. And Notre Dame gets the field goal. But since then, Louisville has outscored them 23 to 7. You're right. I mean, how quickly it looked like the momentum had swung all the way to Notre Dame. I believe it was the first play in the second half. Yeah. The fumble by Thrash. I want you to look at the clock. 212. It's the first time Notre Dame's been in the red zone tonight. Hartman smartly gets it to Price and he gets it down towards the six yard line. That right there, the first time they've been in the red zone tonight. That's the group that deserves a lot of credit. That front seven of Louisville. Undersized on paper, but they played a heck of a game. I think there are a lot of teams in the ACC and looking around and saying, finally, wow, Notre Dame's been getting the best of the conference for a long time. 30 game regular season win streak against ACC teams coming into tonight. 30. Scheduling agreement, of course, Notre Dame and the league. 
lot of opportunities. And then Louisville comes up and puts forth this kind of a performance. Third and five as Hartman's trying to get his team into the end zone. Sprint right, pressure at him, and into the end zone is Mitchell Evans. And as you said, perhaps they should have started going to him a little earlier. He is a great weapon. A great little pick play. He's number three on that trips. Sprint out to him. But like you said, it just couldn't find him enough in the first half after having 134 yards last week against Duke. Sometimes you, you get healthier at wide receiver, think we can spread the ball around a little bit more, and sometimes just feeding your best players what you, you get away from a little bit more than you'd like to. So Hartman does bring him down for a 75 yard drive. Hartman, two interceptions thrown tonight, five sacks. A week after. The thrilling 95 yard game winning drive at Duke. And a guy that came here to Notre Dame to help them take that next step to yes. give himself a chance, not just to look better for NFL draft scouts in a pro style system, but to be a quarterback that could lead a team to the college football playoff, to a national championship. That was the aspiration, that was the goal of this Notre Dame team, and they felt like they were a quarterback. They felt like they were a Sam Hartman away from doing that. Marcus Freeman said to us the other day, we were asking about his leadership. He said, listen, he makes everybody around him better, the type of person he is. And he's very consistent, obviously very mature, older guy, 24 years old, so doesn't get over emotional, the big ups and downs, very consistent around the team. A Love. sea of red and that one Notre Dame sweatshirt. <laughs> and it's been that way for Hartman. A sea of red of the front seven surrounding him for most of the night. And now you see that they're going to watermelon kick this for the onsider. That is the way you lay the ball for the action. And let's see what kind of action it gets. And as it comes loose for a moment, Notre Dame saying they do possess the ball. Let's see what the officials say. Possession for Louisville and the game is Notre Dame has no timeouts. Looks like Notre Dame does recover. So Notre Dame recovers. Oh. The onside kick, and with that, we'll go to the studio. Test reminding our audience right now, it looks like Louisville's going to be undefeated, and Miami trying to remain undefeated, tied up at 17 apiece against Georgia Tech. Next week, Miami on ABC will face undefeated North Carolina. This game right now, currently in the fourth quarter on the ACC Network, Notre Dame's next opponent is USC, and SC down 3-0 over on ESPN against Arizona. Back to you. Defensive back DJ Brown recovered the onside kick. To Notre Dame, first and ten. Please reset the game clock to 132. 132. So a nice job by Schrader. There's so many different ways to do the onside kick, but that side watermelon lay uh, can often get some funky action. That was the case there, as it was recovered by Brown. So they take over with minute 32, trailing by 13. So you're no timeouts. Telling me there's a chance. <laughs> After this Saturday of football, man, you never know. Hartman, as he goes to Jabron Payne. Listen, you just want to fight through to the end no matter. Yes. You, you want to prove yourself always. And you got USC next week. That guy, Jack Plummer, came in with a lot of questions. Even his own head coach said, needs to relax, have more poise. Whole team had poise and a little bit of fire in them tonight. Second and eight for Hartman. Look at the traffic as he spins out of it and then gets it downfield. What a strike to Merriweather. How about that, Jordan? I mean, that is an unbelievable play by Sam Hartman. Zaren Parker, off to coordinator, said he's so good at standing in the eye of the storm right there because that slow mesh system that he came from, he's used to being right up there with the offensive lineman, spins out of that one finds Merriweather goes for 17 yards ball is up in the air and intercepted and that's how it's going to end with the second for Devin Neal so Devin Neal who had the interception earlier gets his second of the night and that is three interceptions thrown by Sam Hartman tonight well, I 
think it's Benjamin Perry that's just sitting in zone coverage, reading the eyes of Sam Hartman. Yeah, 10 that comes in the screen right there to break that up. I mean, look, you got to make throws like that late in the game, down two scores. You can't just hold on the ball and hope someone comes open. And, and what was a glimmer of a chance down two scores. Now it looks like these end zones are getting ready for a mad dash to the middle of the field. This is a team that wasn't expected to have a win like this. This is a program that had one of their all time greats, their native son, Jeff Brom, come home to coach him. He had to go out and grab transfer portal guys, piece it together, including his starting quarterback. Notre Dame was primed with a big time transfer quarterback with a team loaded with talent ready to pounce on the college football playoff scene but they came here to Derby City and they got out run all night long to the finish line and we got a field stormer here in Louisville the cards are flying high again they are 6 and 0 oh, and just toppled top 10 Notre Dame home the kids miss you he is home on top of the world Next to the 5 0 record of Louisville. You can get rid of those. And Katie is with Coach Brom. Welcome yeah, home, Jeff. Putting your test. Coach Brom, this is by far your biggest test yet. What do you think your team proved with the dominant performance? Well, we came out in the second half, we executed, so it was great to see. You know, our fans played a huge role into it. It was a sold out crowd, it was packed, but I think we just really were efficient in the second half. Defense was outstanding, offense played well as, as well. Your defense forced five turnovers, got to the quarterback five times. What can you say about their play and how impactful they were? Well, that's why we won the game. Anytime you win the turnover battle, that's why you're going to win. I think we were very, very efficient taking care of the ball in offense other than one fumble. We got to the quarterback, we affected them like we wanted to, and that's why we won the game. When you returned home, this is what these fans dreamed of, victories like this, celebrations like this. What does it mean to you to be able to give it to them? Well, I'll tell you what, it requires a lot of hard work, but I, I couldn't be happier for our football team, happier for these fans, happy for this university. These guys want to win here. This is a tremendous city. Uh, championships need to be won here, so we just need to keep working one week at a time to try to keep getting better. How badly do you want a bourbon right now? <laughs> All right, sounds good. Congratulations. Thank you. If ever you wonder where Katie George was born and raised, that question just gave you the answer. What a scene. What a sport. What a great day of ball. What surprised you most, Jordan? The physicality that Louisville brought to tonight's game, to a team that is known for physicality, a team that had been tested for four quarters in back-to-back -back weeks with top 25 teams in college football world, needs to know that Louisville is back. Jawar Jordan was awesome with his two big touchdowns. Louisville 6-0. They topple the Irish 33 to 20 for Katie George and Jordan Rogers. I'm Joe Tessitore thanking you for being with us and asking you to enjoy the rest of your night as much as this crowd is. That does it from the Ville.